everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. Today's session is a quick tip Thursday session on the top six tools that I think you need to know about in Topaz Remask. I will be using the newly released Remask 5 to go over those six tools. So if you see a couple new things from your Remask 4 version, that is why. If you have Remask 4 or 3 or 2 or 1, you can upgrade completely free. Just download it from our downloads page at topazlabs.com slash downloads. Click on your version of Remask and you'll download the latest. I am using Remask 5 as a standalone application today. So I'm just going to open up an image directly into Remask. And the first tool that I feel you really need to know about is the very first tool that your mouse becomes, and that is your blue compute brush. The blue compute brush, which I'm now painting along the edges of the lighthouse here, is where you tell the program to think. So you have the green, which you're telling the program, okay, I want to keep this area, and then you have a red brush, which is telling the program I want to cut this area, but this blue compute brush is really necessary to understand and to use properly. You don't have to be too exact with the blue compute brush because we have other brushes that can help to refine your initial compute line that you're creating. So with that initial compute tool, you'll want to go over the edges that you want the cutout to go along and then any areas that have some transparency or negative space or more refined uh, tuning, like up here at the top of our um, at the top of our lighthouse here, this you can just paint over the entire section in blue. You don't have to try to outline these little tiny bars to um, get it super exact at this stage. So that's the first tool. The second tool that I feel like you need to know about is going to be the refinement brushes that I'm going to refine this with. And the most important refinement brushes I feel are your color range brushes. Let me just fill my sky in with red real quick here. There we go. Now I have this initial tri map, my red for cutting off my sky, my green to keep the foreground and the lighthouse, and then the blue compute line. And now the color range tools are number two tool. Color range tools allow for you to select the color that you want to keep or cut, and then select the color range, which is very important. So let me show you the difference of using a cut brush at color range level 10 versus a larger color range. So with your color range tools, you just select the keeper cut. Right now I'm on cut and I'm going to scroll over into my main image and select a portion of the sky. Once I do that, the little dropper turns into a brush and I can scroll over the edges of this compute line and not have to worry about bringing in the color of the lighthouse or the foreground. Now as I do this you can kind of see, let's go a little bit more uh, zoomed in just a touch more here. There we go. You can see as I'm going over this that it's not really selecting a lot because my initial image has some grain to it and it's not really doing a great job of selecting that whole sky. But if I take my color range up, let's say to 35, and I come over here and I select the sky again, look at the difference that makes. It's now cutting that color range because a, a lot more because I've increase the color range that it should be selecting. And so now I can easily come along and quickly get rid of the areas I want to cut and just refine this edge that much more. All right, now I can go into my keep color range and same idea. If I want to be keeping or if I want to keep some of this white, I don't really have to worry too much about the blue sky and the background. So I'm going to take this color range up high to about 45 and just scroll along the edges of my lighthouse here, doing some selections of the areas I want to keep. And up here at the very top, 
making sure that I have majority of these areas selected. So this is an easy way just to refine your masking selections. And I wanted to do a couple more here. There we go. And I'll come down here to the foreground or the horizon line here and make sure that I have that selected. And now I have a very uh, exact tri map where the program knows exactly where I want to keep, exactly where I want to cut, and the areas it needs to think. At this stage, I like to go to my compute mask and make the initial compute. It's going to pop up your mask by default. And this is where we come to tool number three, your view options within Topaz Remask. Over in the top left of your main area, you have five different views that you can view your image in, the original image, the tri-map that you created, the mask that is cut out from that tri-map, your keep mode, which shows you what you're keeping within that initial compute, and then what you're cutting as well. I like to look at all of these views together. So over here on the top right, you can look at one of these views. You can look at a double screen, which will give you options for two different views, or a quad screen, which is going to let you look at four different views. I like to turn this top left one into a tri-map, so I can look at the tri-map, the mask, my keep, and my cut, or my original image on the lower left. This now takes us to our number four uh, tool. The number four tool is the background options. Over here in the lower right where we're looking at our keep mode, it looks really good on this transparent background because I can't really tell the edges very well with this transparent background. So to be able to view what I'm keeping a little bit better, I like to come down to this new background panel and choose a color. Sometimes I'll go directly to an image that I'm going to replace if I'm going to do that within Remask itself, but I always go to the color options because it gives me a great view of telling whether or not I have a good cutout or if I need to do some further refinement. This is fairly good right off the bat. There's definitely some refinement that needs to happen, which takes us to the uh, fifth tool that I think you need to know about, and that's located within our refinement sliders in the adjustment category of Remask. The number one slider that I tend to use is our recovery slider. I'm going to go ahead and go up to 100% view here so you can really start to see what it does. At 100% view of the lighthouse, you can start to see that even though it looks like a really nice strong cutout, there's a little bit of color bleed meaning a lot of that blue sky reflection is still on the black ironwork up at the top of the um, up at the top of the lighthouse. It's very subtle, but you can see it. And if you're wanting to make a very clean extraction, this is some of the most difficult stuff to get rid of. Uh, when you're talking about hair or fur, things like that, this recovery slider is amazing. So as I take this recovery slider up, Keep an eye out over here on the uh, blue kind of color bleed that's happening on the ironwork. Let me take that back down to zero and back up. And it just separates the foreground from that background color bleed and really separates that out for you even further. So that's the recovery slider again that's located in the adjustment refinement tools. And this takes us to our last tool. Number six, once you get to this point and you've refined your mask, but you still have some issues with the mask itself, and you can usually tell within the mask uh, view the best. So over here on the top right, you can tell that there's a little bit of transparency happening along these edges. The number six tool is your magic brushes. After you have your initial compute mask and you make that initial mask, which we did at the very beginning, your primary brushes will turn into a magic brush. And you know that they've turned on whenever you see this magic brush pop up and the little guy is green. And by default, your magic brushes are selected. But what this allows for the primary brushes to now do is come into your cutout, continue working, and it's going to do live updates. So it's going to show you and kind of fill out areas that it intuitively understands, oh, okay, she wants to keep this. So 
I'm just making one or two little marks here, but as you can tell, as I do that, it just fills out and becomes um, kind of magical. <laughs> it fills out to those edges, and that's why it's called a magic brush. So I'm just going along the edge here of my mask and using my green magic brush, continuing to fill in those edges. If I had some transparency happening in the sky where I wanted to cut, I could use my red magic brush. And if there are some areas where um, I want the program to think a little bit more, maybe up here where I see a little bit of confusion happening, I have some red within this ironwork. You can see it really well over here on the mask where it's black here. If I just click on that with my blue brush, it's going to recompute, rethink some things, and try to give me what I want. If it's not working there, which I, it's not right there in that middle triangle, I can quickly come to my color range tool and say cut, click right there in the middle of that triangle where it's pulling in some of that blue sky. It's going to give me that color and I'm just going to select that, select my keep, and as easy as that I was able to refine that little section that has a little bit more difficulty there. And at that point I'm ready to say okay. So if I wanted to at this point go and replace an image, let's go back to our main view. I can do that within Remask now, within Remask 5, and just do simple background replacement by going image, clicking on an image that might be a good background replacement, doing a little bit of refinement. Getting that situated exactly where I want it. Maybe I want to move that over and get a little bit more dramatic clouds there in the background. And below our background, once you click on the image, you're going to have all of these sliders pop up. So at that point, after I've gone through those initial six tools, this is really where I end up. And I can come in and, um, you know, maybe change my temperature to go a little bit more warmer or change my saturation uh, to kind of match it with my foreground uh, image. But I hope that gives you a good idea of what I believe the top six tools within Remask 5 are. Again, that was our basic compute brush work in the beginning. The color range brushes, especially working with your color range slider to refine that initial tri-map. The various views over here on the top left and the top right. The background options to start off with, your solid color, and then more so with your image replacement and adjustment sliders. Your recovery slider, which is one of the most important refinement tools I find in the whole program. And then your magical compute brushes uh, that will auto-update as you work and fill in those edges intuitively. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and I hope this gave you a good insight into the program and a quick tip format. And have a great rest of the week and weekend. We'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.